what up how's it going so we on to the next episode of better call Saul. that last episode like i said it's an understated show but um especially if you have watched breaking bad it gets things across and it does it in a dope way right so that whole like a quarter of an episode that showed how they were going to go about digging and making that lab up underneath uh that was that was dope to me right uh so we're going to see now where jimmy and kim are going in life because kim she knows what she really wants to do and the thing is she's so good at both like from what we saw that little bit we saw of her helping just regular everyday folks she did a dope job right but then she's also a beast she's handling that major account by herself right and then you got jimmy who though when them punk motherfuckers came and took his money from them phones i was like man <laughs> that that just had me tight because it was like that was some whole shit for them to do but let's go ahead and start this episode better call saul and see how they move on with life Howard's end all the way down, huh? I just love Emma Thompson. Who doesn't? She's so pragmatic. Huh? What, Fingers it's crossed. a uh, Oscars pool? I'm headed up to four. You got anything? Yeah. And I'll do three. Already done. You know, you're making the rest of us look bad. Discovery for Cordero is coming this afternoon, so you might want to kick it up a bit. <laughs> you really did it. What? <laughs> Isaacson versus Vicarian Holdings, Inc. We've been assembling binders for months. I've been kind of slammed <laughs> with the Oscar pool, in case you weren't yeah, paying Oscar attention. Pool. Right, sorry. They find some old shares in this company he invested in like 20 years back. Isaacson shares are worthless, Whoa. right? But Chuck does some digging, and it turns out they formed a new corporation that's virtually identical to the old corp Isaacson invested in. Chuck won a case that Howard thought was unwinnable using only the power of obscure case law. That's good. Yeah, very. <laughs> yeah. He can't even understand. Congratulations, Mr. McGill. The scope <laughs> of what it took place. Chuck, like, that's funny. Day, huh? yeah. Of course. You're one of our law students? Yes, I'm in my third year at UNM, oh. thanks to HHM. You considered it. I just wanted to ask if Carrying Holdings, Inc. would have been liable under the continuing enterprise exception as well, right? That's right. Yeah, we looked into that. Sounds like it was Isaacson v. Chuck handing him his butt on a platter, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> Isaacson is our client. Oh, really? Okay, well, the, the other guy's butts then. Yep. <laughs> Served on platters. That's right. Thanks, Jimmy. Hail the <laughs> conquering hero. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Howard. And it'll be you soon. Yep. See you later, Jimmy. Is that the moment that sent him on the path to be like, maybe I need to do something? Yeah, I guess that was the moment. He's like, you know, and you could definitely understand even like we already could understand why uh, his brother was shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your hour's pretty much set now? Yeah. Weekdays, nine to four, and the busy time. Oh, yeah? It's dead, Kim. It's deader than disco. Mm, sorry. Does that mean you were able to schedule an appointment with the therapist? Mm. I decided not to go. Time went by, and I kind of calmed down and realized it's just, it's just not for me. Yeah, but how do you know? Unless I try, it, it just doesn't feel right. I need to be moving forward. Hello, Rich. So good to see you. You too. Thanks for seeing me on such short notice. Oh, are you kidding? I've been wanting to thank you in person ever since you sent Billy Gatwood our way. So, shall we? So, um, how is James holding up? I didn't get to speak with him at the funeral. We're taking it one day at a time. Well, grief moves at its own pace. And it's different for everybody. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How's your banking division? Well, we have some banking work, but I wouldn't say we have a division. Mm. Would you like one? Yep, this is what I figured she was doing. She's not happy at all. Two bedrooms each. Werner will probably take his own. The rest of the guys can double up. Wired and plumbed. Yes. 
Well, this is a good start. Well, what do you have in mind? A couple treadmills over there, mm -hmm. barbells, weight bench. Yeah. You build out a stock bar, beer on tap. I mean, they're German, so. Yeah. <laughs> Entertainment system here, a few lazy boys with couches. Pool table, I don't know, foosball. Germans play basketball, yeah? I believe so. I'd like a full camera perimeter inside. And we'll keep it low profile, and then we'll be watching. We just don't need to stick it in their faces. Outside, too, obviously. In case someone tries to find a way in or out. I'll put a sally port on that door. We'll control it from the outside. And we're gonna need a trailer to monitor the cameras. Two guys, 24-hour monitoring, working shifts. Let's say five guys, minimum. Right. Probably help to have a couple German speakers as well. I can provide you men. What is it? Infection, bad one. You got a pen? I remember. Yeah? Treadmills. You want to check wholesale providers. These guys are going to tear right through consumer grade. You see why Mike moved to the head of everyone, even his guys who he'd already been working with. That motherfucker Mike is thorough. And I like how they do it. it it's not superhero shit to me. It's like, yeah, that's true. It's basic. But you can see how you would overlook it. Oh, Mrs. Strauss passed away. How? She, um, she went in her sleep a couple weeks ago. Heart failure. The upper room. Uh, the Hummel. Oh, the little figure. Yeah, yeah, he got it. So, uh, he finished college then? Yep, just this last semester. Good, that's, that's good. Damn. How did you know? Oh, because you did the will, right. Is there a memorial? Uh, sorry, it was last week. Are you on an hourly rate, or would this be like a flat fee kind of thing? Ooh, this is tempting. Not practicing any longer. Hamlin Hamlin McGill has an excellent estate law department and they'll help you sort things out. Just ask for Francis Chef and he'll point you in the right direction. McGill, wait, isn't that you? Uh, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> my husband and I screamed at the Right? Same yeah, I, that's the first thing that came to my mind. I was like, she helped him early on. <laughs> that look into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go? Single tear. <laughs> Somewhere good? Somewhere very good. You could be here too. Anyway, we were talking and he offered me a job. Again? What? He can't take no for an answer? They want me to run their banking division. Build it, really. You're not seriously considering it. I've been taking on some pro bono work. Overflow from the public defender's office. Why? <laughs> I like it. I'm good at it. I'm helping people. No, it uh, makes a lot of sense. I have been thinking about criminal law myself lately. Really? Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, you're helping people. I'm thinking an office in one of these refurbished bungalows, you know, downtown by the courts. You know, stick around where all the people who need help are. Mm. Wexler McGill, criminal law. Mm. That all sounds great. If I go to Schweikart and Coakley, I have all those associates to help cover Mesa Verde. It'll keep paying the bills and free me up to do the work I really care about. I oh, see so you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too. Kind of, yeah. I'll be right back. No, Jimmy. What? I, no, I just I gotta hit the head. Fork. Is this like a fork in the road? Do it. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, you know that hurt him. Kim, you gotta do what's best for you. Yeah. So um to Schweikert and Coakley. That and was Wexler. The only thing I won't say the only thing, but it's what his mind was focused on. The goal was at the end of this, we do this together. As you saw, he has a he fell asleep with a pad planning this out. That was always a part of the plan. And so you saw him sort of hyperventilating. Yeah, it, that makes sense. What did you want to tell me, Mike? My bad. My bad. <laughs> I stand by what I said. Oh, okay. I Shut up. a charlatan. Yeah. But there's a time and there's a place. Right. And yeah. that wasn't it. You left me quite the mess. Yeah, I can see that. It'll be okay. Eventually. Anita's not happy. You might want to call her. Right. Call her, Mike. Probably better if I don't. Know that I would never forget Maddie. I know. No one expects you to wear a hair shirt for the rest of your life. Same goes for you. You and Kaylee okay? 
we're good. I was thinking maybe I could pick Kaylee up from school tomorrow. That'd be a big help, Pop. I like how they had that conversation. It was nice and short, right? Because it's a conversation that needs to be had, but done in the mic way, right? Like, okay, what's going to happen here with Howard? Hey, Jimmy. God Howard. damn, Howard. This was going in the mail today. You would have gotten it by Friday. I got a pressing need. Only $5,000 will cure. Oh, there you go, then. <laughs> We've had some setbacks. Paying out to Chuck's estate. And that is part of it. The firm's reputation is not what it was. That so what's the plan? sucks. No, I mean, what's the plan to get HHM back on its feet? Are you kidding me? I, I just referred a client to you guys. Get your shit together, Howard. Excuse what? me? Oh, please. You suffer one little setback. One little setback? Fine. Your pain is very special. Woe is you. Just stop wallowing, okay? This place is all you've got. You want to save your business? You want to save your dignity? You're going to have to fight. You're a shitty lawyer, Howard, but you're a great salesman. So get out there and sell. Fuck you, Jimmy. There you go. Use that. Okay, there we go. Set over here. You got a spot yet? Pinatas. Are you kidding? No, no, that could could work. Yeah. You can't keep them here. Why? Uh, I pay rent. For right. This place. What is she talking about? They're a fire hazard. Well, they're not going to be here very long. Mm. So ridiculous. That's that's on me. No, it's uh, prepaid. Get rich quick schemes never work. Just watch me. My doctor tells me again and again that you may never wake. And yet, I wait. We live in the hills, in the place my brothers built from things they found. We were always hungry. But there was a lukuma tree, scrawny, barely alive. My family had given up on it years before. When I was seven, I became fixated on it. It took a long time, but the buds grew into green fruit. I didn't tell anyone. I plucked one. I'd never tasted something so sweet. And then I began taking it to the village to sell. One day, much of the fruit was gone from my tree. I thought it was probably a coati, about the size of a large house cat. I built a snare, but the coati thrashed so hard, it broke out of the snare, broke his leg as well. <laughs> I tried to grab it, but he slipped away. I knew it would show itself sooner or later. So I waited <laughs> for hours <laughs> into the night. When my brothers called for me, I did not answer. I didn't make a sound. I was so still. He gonna wait you out. He is going to wait you out. <laughs> Finally, it came out. It knew I was there, but it was hungry. I caught it. It fought me, but I was stronger. <laughs> the merciful fire to kill it. But fuck mercy. I kept it. It lived for quite some time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe you will wake, Ekator. All right, gentlemen. We have a few things to go over here. Hey, get your that ass over you there. That means you too. Sie zahlen euch gutes Geld, dafür hört zu. There is a phone in each house goes directly to me or one of my guys. Anything you need, call. So when do the girls get here? Anything within reason. Once the work begins, they focus. I'll see to it. What you've done here is very impressive. <laughs> Thank you for that, Michael. <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey. You keep an eye on this one. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That, he'd be bothering me too, like. Which makes me wonder if he's the one they even worry about, right? I'm thinking long term. I see a real need in this community for safe, affordable, untraceable phones, and I'm ready to fill it. I need to be able to sell my phones without worrying about getting ripped off. If you let me sell my phones without hassle, I cut you in. Say, a hundred bucks every night that I'm out. And that's money for literally doing nothing. Why wouldn't we just take all of it? 
you take sure, it you now, and I'll never come again. again. Take all that I've got, but then I stop selling, and you lose a valuable revenue stream. You could just expand your thinking a little bit. All right, we got a man of action. <laughs> <laughs> You should have taken the deal. You're like the stupidest person I've ever met. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, pussy. <laughs> I don't know why it's so sad. It's fuck y'all. Y'all should have took the deal, weirdos. The name of the episode is Pinata. Okay. <laughs> We're sorry, man. All right, we're sorry. Fuck your apologies. Yeah, you are. Very much so. Mm -hmm. We'll leave you alone, okay? We, we won't mess with you anymore. Easy to say now, but what about tomorrow? I, 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 I'll I swear, man. I'll swear at anything you want me to. Yo, the writers had fun Trust writing this one. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. After this, you'll never have to see us again. And you will spread the word that I'm off limits? Yes. Yes, yes, we'll tell everyone we'll say that you don't mess with the cell phone guy. We're done. Okay, we're good. Nah, fuck right. that. That's enough. You know what? If it's that important to you, go ahead. No, 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 please. Hey. No, 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 The long con in the short term. <laughs> First, let me start by saying don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you all subscribe, make sure to hit the notification bell. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to all the subscribers. And I have a Patreon with full-length early reactions to things like this. If you'd like to, check it out. That was a good episode. I really enjoyed it. If you were to ask me an episode that showed what Better Call Saul is all about, I would... There's other episodes that I could point to. But this one, like right now off the top of my head... Yeah, this this is one for sure. Because I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, the writers had fun writing this one, right? So while I'm watching it, you know, I'm thinking also about how I'm going to do the review. And I was going to do the review in two parts. We were going to go what happens with uh, Jimmy, Kim, and then what happens with Mike and Gus. But nah, I scratched that here because I want to talk about what the writers did, all right? So... We have the part where we see Gus and Mike talking and we know what they're talking about. This, this is the dope thing about this. They play with and understand that us as the viewers already know what the end point is. So you don't have to explain or say shit to us about anything. Just talk about it. Just show them planning it and doing it. Just drop us right in the middle of the conversation. We know exactly what they're talking about. And to see Gus and Mike, when you first see it, us, the viewer, we like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. They doing that. But then Mike comes up with a great point. And as I said, what they do with Mike, he's not a superhero. He's not, at this point, I can say this now because of how far I'm at. He's not a Thomas Shelby, right? <laughs> he's uh, from Peaky Blinders. What he is, he's more of a, he's just who he is, right? So when he says what he says at all times, I won't say at all, but most of the times, it's like, oh, yeah. Not, oh, I can't believe he thought of that. Oh, but it's like he's saying something that's obvious. But in that moment, we wouldn't even be thinking about. So when we see those houses, our first thing is, oh, that's dope. They're going to hide them there. But Mike is like, no, no, they need more. Right. Because you can't just have them be caged. They need, require things to do. Right. They require entertainment. They it. That whole plan that he comes up with of the list of things and the chairs and recreation and you want to have them uh, allowed to at least do some recreation because they not they can't really blow off steam. They can't go nowhere, but at least allow them for their mind to be taken off of that work that they're doing. And it's going to be hard work. Right. And. I just like how how it's done. It's real simple. They talk about it and you're like, oh, yeah. And then. Later on, when we see Mike do what he does and that guy Kai is being a dick, it's like, ah, yep. This is why Mike was all about the security cams and all that. And another thing, like he's saying simple things that make sense. Uh, security cams, we got to make them low visibility, basically. So they know they're being watched, but we don't need it all in their face right in front of them. Right. We need to 
we need to be able to see them, but they don't really need to be able to see that we're seeing them, right? Why? Because they don't want to have them feel like trap rats. But this guy, Kai, he's a problem and he's an issue. All right. Like I said, the writing on that, dope. The story that Gus tells, it's um, it's on the nose, right? It's like, I can see it being over the top for some people. But for me, I'm laughing because I'm like, I the writers had fun with that story, with Gus telling that story. Who knows if the fucking story is true? It was just him trying to get a point across that, oh, I'm going to wait you out. I, I've waited you out this, this long, and I'm not letting you go now that you're in this predicament and you're injured. Oh, no, that's just the beginning. Right. So when he's telling that story, I'm like, that's fire. And you could tell uh, Giancarlo Esposito probably had mad fun doing the acting in that. Right. Um, you know, as I said, I fucked with him ever since I was a child. I've been watching Spike Lee movies as far back as I can remember. And so to see this man be uh, what's it? Dean Big Brother Almighty on school days. Yo. I'm pretty sure most of y'all, if y'all not like black people from the U.S., y'all have never seen School Days. But if you ever wondered about like black fraternities and shit like that, it, it's a it's a dope movie. It's not like an in-depth look, but it shows a little bit of it. And, uh, you know, Spike Lee, he went to a black college. Now, in that film, Giancarlo Esposito, he plays uh, the the big brother or whatever, the the guy who's in charge of the line or whatever. And it's dope. Because I've seen stories about him playing a villain or something like that. And I'm like, when you look at that, that back then, if you watch it, it's villainous on a different scope, right? And you could like see that in him. And then, of course, bugging out. And then you see him just flourish into all these fucking roles, right? Um, and so on here, I'm like, oh, he had fun too, right? Because on this one, it's not requiring them to be in a bunch of different places or the dialogue isn't too difficult and it's not like this you know back and forth but it is allowing them to flex the acting muscle and in this one they wanted to show him as almost like this sort of grim reaper type of figure just hovering over and once again that's playing with what we already know the reason that scene works is if we don't know about how their relationship don salamanca and gus's relationship goes in the future that scene would just seem like kind of cheesy you're like oh, okay tough guy but we know the way it goes right all right then we go to that pinata scene he goes and talks to the dudes and i'm like listen to what he's saying and then these i hate these guys if y'all could tell because they just lamed in the motherfucker right and I saw Lavelle Crawford's name at the beginning. So I knew Huel was going to be in this. The way they've utilized Huel in this is dope. Once again, they know our fan favorites. This show is basically like a fan favorite show, right? It's a way for you to keep in touch with some of these, you know, because of course we got Walt and we, we got the main characters, but there was these other ones who people really liked. Like if you were a big time fan of the show, you may, you may have enjoyed. And so to see Huel always, he's not saying anything, but he's getting the job done, which is funny because as I said, he's lost a ton of weight in real life. So I wondered how would it play, but it looks almost as if he's a different character. He's getting the work done and all that. But when we see Huel later on, he's good at the, you know, yapping shit from people or, you know, pickpocketing people. But we see him, my man be sleep with his eyes open. You know what I mean? He just, he just acting like he working in, at moments, Like he'll get the job done, but there's a little bit more laziness to him in this in better call. Saul, you don't see that. You see him getting the job done. So that pinata scene, the name of the episode is pinata. I'm like, by the time we get to the pinatas and they break it and bust it, I'm like, what? This goes into how Jimmy thinks he thinks multiple steps ahead. It's, there were moments in this where I'm thinking, oh, I get what's going on. And then it just kept going, right? Like, so when they're hitting the pinatas and they keep hitting it and he goes, guys, no, stop, right? At first I'm thinking, yeah, what are they going to get carried away? And he realized, oh no, he's playing with the fear, right? Like he's, he's going to draw this out. I wonder were they like, how could we have a way that hasn't been done before where we get these kids to like, leave him alone. Cause we've seen something like this before happen before even Jimmy saying, you know, uh, I thought you guys are like the, the line. He said, Oh man, I can't recall what it was where he's where they corner him. And he's like, you really should have, uh, took me up on that offer. 
we've seen like that happen before. That's like a trope in movies. And then, you know, somebody bigger and better comes and helps him out. But the way they did it was they didn't harm some little kids. They scared them shitless and they did it in a pinata factory. All right. Kim and Jimmy. When Kim goes to Schweikert, it's Schweikert, right? I assumed, and now looking back on it, I assumed incorrectly, and I probably should have thought about it a little bit more, but, uh, you know, it was in the middle of the episode. And what it was was that I assumed, oh, she's just going to give them Mesa Verde. And I forgot, no, no, they want her, right? Like, they, they like that she pays attention to it. Okay. Like, I feel like they probably would even be a little bit worried that she's doing what she's doing, like what that she's doing what she's actually doing. And what she's doing is becoming a partner, bringing them a giant client, having a banking portion of the uh, a banking. Uh, a banking branch of the law firm and. She gets to go do her other work because she's in charge. When you're in charge, you do meetings and shit. And because this bank is going to be giving them a bunch of... Like, this is such a great plan by Kim. Because Mesa Verde, they have to deal with one of them. But because they're opening so many branches and expanding regionally, with the plan on going national, right? They don't really need any other clients. And she's at the top of that. All she needs to do is sit into a, in a meeting and see how everything is going. She now has the ability to go and do the work that she wants to do from the beginning. Right. You see Jimmy, Kim talking and you see Jimmy not understanding anything. He's clueless. He's just trying to do his job. Oscars, a uh, pool and all that shit. And then she's spitting facts at him about her brother to the point where she spelled out everything to him. She told him everything and how it happened. And he goes, I guess that's good, right? <laughs> like he still doesn't get it. And he witnessed his brother not give a fuck that he was even alive and breathing right in front of him. But he saw how he treated Kim, which wasn't even really all that big of a deal. But the fact that he even interacted with Kim, think about that. Cause it wasn't like he was fawning over her. Like, Oh, he just looked it wasn't, he didn't even look impressed almost. It was just this thing of, oh, uh, that's dope that you know it, right? And Jimmy wanted that. So yeah, as y'all saw, I realized, well, oh, this is the moment. We're seeing the seed. So when he goes past the law library, I'm like, oh shit, this is it. He goes in there and that sets him on the path. And that's interesting. It's one of those things we knew I didn't realize it'd be like this one singular point that you could point to. But as I said, it makes it even more apparent why, uh, you know, his brother just could not, could not believe that is like, I'm thinking about it now. The fact that, uh, he was able to hold his face when Jimmy comes and tells him, that yeah yeah i'm a lawyer he's like <laughs> like i would have been you know what i mean on the floor because it's, wait what you don't care about nothing you, like i said my man wasn't even wearing a belt to work he, he didn't care about his appearance and it's also this thing of he's broke right but his brother looked down on him already but when it comes to law he really he doesn't even rate him he doesn't even think about it so then we go okay okay now I, I i see more why why it was like that jimmy and kim we see what she's good at we see her all the way back then and the way the type of mind she has when it comes to law and figuring things out she's a beast at it on the low level with uh with the criminals and on the highest of high levels, trying to spread some big time bank, Mesa Verde, and make it grow even further. And for her to come up with that plan, it's like, okay. But she saw that what Jimmy had done, and she realized, oh shit, he's serious. I mean, his sketches, 
him writing out names and Jimmy, you saw him hyperventilate. And as I said, I don't know if maybe I look too f- much into this, but you see, it says fork and he's standing there. And I was like, wait, is this a fork in the road? Maybe I look too deep into that, but I just feel like they wouldn't just have that there. And right. Like it meant something. And it seems that it did. Cause right then and there, he's like, okay, he's like, you see him hyperventilating. Because his goal, the thing that was keeping his mind off of everything was at the end of the day, at the end of all this, I know what I'm going to do. And I got her and I got me and that's. Nah, so when that is taken, the rug is pulled from up underneath him. He's like, oh. now watch this. That forced him to go and make a move into his hustling thing. Right? Because he sort of tampered with it, played with it, but he was out of it. Them kids did him dirty and he was like out of it. But what she did made him go, you know what? Shit's real out here. I got to do what I got to do. So what he does with those phones and we end up with Huel and all that, man. Hey, this is a good episode. Really good. I, I, I like that one a lot. Yeah. Hey, better call Saul. Next episode.